Hello everyone, thanks for checking out today's video. Welcome to my channel, Jersey Shore Pondscapes Videos. My name's Chris. Uh, we talk all about koi ponds and water gardens and everything that goes along with it. I have a ton of videos here with a lot of helpful information that I, I really help, uh, hope that can help you out and answer a lot of questions for you. Please use the playlists here on the channel to help navigate, find your way around, find what you're looking for, as I have all the different playlists broken down to different topics with a bunch of videos um, in each topic, you know, to help you out. So today's video, um, we're just going to talk briefly about um, a product um, called an underlay, which is used underneath your pond liners when you're building a pond to help cushion it. Um, We'll get into all this stuff and kind of tell you about it and what are the advantages and you know why you may or may not need this. So this underlay is basically we look at it as a cushion underneath your pond liner to protect your liner from rocks, roots, you know, any kind of sharp debris, whatever, um, you know, in the dirt, in the soil <laughs> that you're putting your pond liner on. Um, it can be a, a very useful product. However, um, I don't believe that it's a product that you need. Now, I've built <laughs> a ton of ponds, okay, over the years. Um, I can probably count on one hand the amount of times that I've actually had to use this product over the last 25 years, all right? Now, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, and it's not a very expensive product. So if you want to use this under your pond and you want to throw a couple extra you know, dollars into your budget uh, when building your pond to do that, then absolutely, it's not going to be a bad thing at all. Okay, it's, it's not bad. My point is, is it's not always necessary. Now, I live in an area where um, most of the soil you know, and all the ponds I build in the towns all around us here um, are generally good. Some towns have got a little more clay, some towns are a little more sand, but um, we don't live in like mountainous regions where there's a lot of rocks and, and boulders and sharp objects, you know, in the ground that I need to be um, really um, concerned about. Um, we do get roots, right? Like, you know, tree roots and stuff we will hit. Um, I do cut them back. We, you know, cut them deep into the side of the pond and put the dirt over them again so they're kind of covered up. But when I dig out my ponds, um, I rake everything out. I remove any kind of rock, stones, debris, you know, roots, everything that's in the pond. We eliminate so that after you know I have the pond dug out and I'm ready for my pond liner this soil is clean and soft okay um, and for that I put a little extra time and a little extra effort into doing and but I don't have to worry about putting all these kind of underlays and stuff you know underneath um, Another reason why I typically don't use this stuff is I put four inch bottom drains into all of my ponds, which requires that I cut a hole in my liner and do all the plumbing underneath, underground, under my pond um, to gravity feed out to a, um, you know, external filter. Um, so when I cut a hole in my liner, you know, I'm going to have this underneath it and I have to cut this out as well. I mean, you know, not difficult, but it's just another thing I have to be worried about because I cannot seal a silicone seal my bottom drains um, with the liner and this stuff underneath it. Okay, this has to not be there. Um, <laughs> also, like installing skimmers, right? You got to cut the liner to open the hole for the front of the skimmer. Um, you can't have this stuff in the way of that either. Um, so if I don't need it, I typically don't use it. Now, I've ripped out a lot of ponds in the past, um, you know, that are existing and we're rebuilding, we're redoing, we're making them bigger, better, whatever. Um, and sometimes under those old ponds, I find this underlay material. Um, sometimes I find 
newspapers, like old rotted newspapers. And you'd be surprised at how long these newspapers can last under the pond. Um, <laughs> long time. Um, I've also find quite often carpet, okay, like carpeting. Um, I've even found a lot the uh, carpet padding, you know, the padding that goes underneath your carpet, the like yellow, blue, red, green, purple stuff, you know, all different colors. I find that underneath ponds often. So, I mean, it's anything just to provide that cushion, a little protection from your liner. Now, the thing is with this stuff is it is very um, dense as far as the fibers go, right? And it is very um, strong, right? It's definitely going to help stop, you know, like a, a rock from puncturing up into your liner. Definitely. However, our most common liners that we use today are um, 45 mil EPDM rubber liners. The advantage of using these liners and why they have become this standard is simply because, um, well, they're rubber. And the big advantage of it is their flexibility, right? So if there is a, you know, rock or stone in the bottom of my pond, underneath my pond liner, when I fill it with water, the liner is just going to flex around it. It's not just going to puncture a hole right through it. The liner is going to stretch and, and, and go around it. So it's really not that big of an issue. Um, what I find with this stuff, as with landscape fabric, okay, regular landscape fabric, which is generally thinner than this, um, but same idea, um, this stuff does not biodegrade, all right? This stuff lasts forever. I've ripped apart some old landscape jobs, you know, like I had to put new, you know, plants in front of people's houses and stuff, and there's landscape fabric that's probably been down there for 25 years. This stuff does not biodegrade, and it gets so embedded in roots and, and all the crap in there that it's hard to get it out. Um, so occasionally I find this stuff in the bottom of ponds where tree roots have come in and woven through this stuff and it just becomes a real pain to pull it out and, and get rid of it. So that's always an issue with this. Um, but again, you know, <laughs> the bottom line is um, if you have a lot of rocks, roots, sharp objects in your pond, try to clean them up, rake them out, cut the roots back, you know, as much as you can, even perhaps um, getting a little bit of play sand and putting some play sand down on the, the bottom of your pond or just up the sides of your pond a little bit to act as a nice cushion you know, under your liner is, is a cheap option as well, all right? And, you know, or, you know, use this underlay stuff. A lot of times, here's another little cheat for you. Now, I said I never, you know, really hardly ever have I bought this stuff to use under my ponds. But I will tell you that if I'm ripping a pond out and rebuilding it, when I rip the old pond out, I have old pieces of pond liner, okay? If I have roots or tree stump or, you know, some rocks, you know, some whatever, in, in the pond, and after I dig it out, I can use the old pond liner <laughs> underneath the new liner to protect the new liner from, you know, as I would this. So if I'm removing all that old pond liner, rather than having to, you know, dispose of it, I can reuse it. So I can take those old pieces of pond liner, you know, like this, and put them over the areas of my shelf or the pond, the side of the pond, the wall, whatever, that I might have some roots coming into. There might be a big rock in there. There might be something. I can use the old pond liner as well. So <laughs> while this stuff does have a purpose, you know, sometimes I find other ways to use what I have, <laughs> right? or, you know, reuse whatever, 
rather than going out and buying new stuff. But if you don't have it, you're building a brand new pond for the first time, you have a lot of rock, clay, sticks, gravel, you know, um, roots and stuff in the pond, you know, this might be a good option for you to put this in. And just um, even as a peace of mind, you know you have a nice cushion under your pond liner and you don't have to worry about, you know, any sharp edges puncturing your liner when you fill it up with water. All right, so just a quick, simple video, just some thoughts, um, some of my experiences and, you know, do you need this? Do you have to buy this when you buy, buy pond liner? A lot of uh, pond stores and, you know, aquarium shops or wherever you're in garden centers, wherever you're buying your pond liner from, are going to try to sell you that stuff whenever you buy pond liner. You know, you're going to say, oh, I'm just building a brand new pond. I need a piece of pond liner, you know, 15 by 20. And they're going to say, okay, um, you're going to need underlay as well. You have to put this underlay underneath it as a cushion. All right. They're going to try to sell you this. I'm going to tell you that. I know. All right. Um, and it's not that expensive, but it may not be necessary. All right. When you dig your ponds out, I will typically, you know, dig my pond out before I buy my pond liner. All right. Simply because pond liner is not cheap. And if I don't need a piece, you know, 20 by 20, then I don't want to buy a piece 20 by 20. If I need a piece that's 15 by 20, I might save 100 bucks. Okay? So dig your ponds out first. Get the size, the shape, everything done. Measure it all out then. Right? Once your pond is dug out, you're able to determine whether or not you need this product. Do I have a nice sandy soil? Well, then I don't need this, okay? But if you just go to store and you buy this stuff uh, with your pond liner before you start digging your pond, you know, you might be wasting some money, right? Dig your pond out first. Know what, exactly what size you need to fit in that pond, and you will know your soil conditions as to whether or not you need to purchase an underlay as well. Um, again, they're going to try to sell it to you, but you may not need it. All right, a pond liner, I guess my point is a pond liner will be just fine all by itself if you don't have sharp, rough, jagged objects underneath it, um, you know, to puncture holes. All right, thank you very much for watching. Just a short video today. I hope it helped you out, answered some questions, gave you something to think about. Um, thank you for watching the video. Please hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're into this stuff. I really appreciate your support. Take a look at all the videos I got here. Um, hopefully there's a lot of good information that can really help you and answer some questions. So thank you for watching and hopefully we'll see you back soon in another video. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.